dedicated to how SSH integration hopefully <laughs> will be better understood um, by you as an NCP for your clients um, as we move into the next framework program, Horizon Europe. Um, before we get started, um, we would like to first just share with you a few tips of netiquette. Um, Maura, could you please show the, the slide? Maura? Uh, yeah, just a moment, please. Yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I don't need my slides just yet. I wanted to, to share the Bridge to Horizon slides um, so that we can inform our participants today about some internet etiquette rules. I think that'll just take a moment. You can share the, the slide. Um, okay, this is actually not the slide that I meant. Um, could you actually show um, the Bridge to Horizon presentation slides? Okay, so here we go. So, as I mentioned, just a few um, words before we get started. Um, as you know, we would ask that you please mute your microphones and keep your cameras turned off during the presentations. Um, if you have any questions during any of the presentations, please do uh, feel free to make use of the chat function uh, to the right hand side. Um, you'll find the chat function. Um, we will definitely be reviewing the chat function and we will then be addressing these questions during the planned Q&A sessions um, after each presentation. But before we move into um, this brief presentation of the Bridge to Horizon project, we first wanted to start with a quick Mentimeter poll. Okay, I see that there are some sound problems. Hopefully you can all hear me now. Okay, if not, please let us know. Um, Maura, could you please share the Mentimeter information? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So for those of you who are probably by now quite familiar with Mentimeter, I would ask that you please grab your smartphones and enter this code 64879512. I write it into the chat. Yes, it is now appearing in the chat. So I hope everyone has had a chance to pull it up. Okay, so. All right, I hope you're all able to see the first question. I'll give you a couple of minutes to answer. So which programming area of Horizon Europe are you responsible for? Given that today's information session is open to all Horizon Europe NCPs, especially those representing clusters one through six, we really hope to see a good turnout from those who maybe aren't quite so familiar with this topic but would like to learn more about it, given that it's quite important um, that the social sciences and humanities be integrated into all areas of the Horizon program. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 
So far we have pretty good representation from cluster two, but we also have, yeah, okay. Quite a number coming from cluster six, seven so far, from cluster four, digital industry and space. Okay. Give just a little bit more time to give those a chance who haven't yet managed to log in the chance to answer the question. But it's good to know so far that all cluster areas are currently represented. Welcome, it's great to have you today. Okay. Give 30 more seconds before we move to the next question. Okay, great. So now we'd like to ask our second question. How familiar are you with SSH integration? So please take a moment, think about it and let us know. So far, there seems to be relative familiarity with it. So it's not something that's completely new to the participants, which is great to know. Okay. All right, all right, okay, I think then we have probably come to the point where we're not going to get too many more answers, but as we can see, there's an average familiarity with SSH integration, which means that there's still room for improvement of the knowledge that you have about this topic, and that is exactly what we're going to focus on today with our event. Okay. I will try and share the results. Just a moment, please. So for those who were curious in regards to the first, the response to the first question from Mentimeter, I hope you can all see my slides or at least see my screen. The majority of those NCPs coming from cluster two, culture, creativity, and inclusive society are familiar with SHH SH integration, which is not overly surprising, but, um, or I at least should say, excuse me, um, in terms of program area represented, the majority today are coming from cluster two, but we also have, yeah, relatively good representation from the other clusters. And in regard to the second question, your familiarity with SSH integration, as I was mentioning, there's an, a middling familiarity. So as I mentioned, our goal today is to help improve your familiarity with SSH integration. That doesn't mean that uh, you'll come out knowing absolutely everything at the end of the day, but we hope to give you a bit more security in your expertise um, so that when you are advising your applicants at the start uh, for the first, um, calls that will be opening soon, um, you'll feel a little bit more secure in what it is that you'll be talking to them about. Okay, so on that note, I would like to now turn 
the floor over to my colleague, Deanna, who will talk to you about the Bridge to Horizon program, our project. Thank you, Kimberly. Good morning to everybody. Um, thank you, Kimberly, again, for organizing this um, event. Um, this is an event uh, um, within our project Bridge to Horizon. Uh, maybe you all uh, know already about it. It is uh, the bridging project, the follow up project of the NCP Academy. Maybe you know already the NCP Academy. And as the name says, it is intended to bridge um, between the two framework programs, Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe, the project networks um, from the thematic and other NCP networks. So the targets are to maintain continuity with current NCP structures and network coordination. And what is in particular new is to integrate the NCP networks under a common Horizon Europe NCP portal. So that's the idea of the project. And part of it, and a big part of it, are the, still the trainings for NCP as the training, the event today to develop and provide materials and service concepts for NCP and your daily work. Um, and for you also for your daily work um, to support applicants, organize brokerage events and uh, discuss the needs and requirements uh, for NCPs and of the national NCP networks to adapt to Horizon Europe. So these are the key questions of um, this project, uh, which still, still runs until next year. So we have uh, an upcoming event uh, in our training calendar. Maybe you can already now save the date for the digital tools for NCPs in July, save the date. And one big announcement I have to make, um, we have uh, the new NCP portal just launched, uh, Horizon Europe NCP portal .eu. You can visit here our NCP Academy training and uh, the announcement of the training tools, the registration for the tools will be also open via this portal. If you have any questions regarding trainings or you have new ideas, for new trainings or in-depth trainings to certain topics uh, within Bridge to Horizon, please contact my colleague Maria, uh, and she is responsible for the trainings in Bridge to Horizon. Um, I would like now to um, hand over again to Kimberly to start with um, the training. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Liana. So, to begin with our information session today, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Her name is Beatrice Luca Lucaroni. She is policy officer and SSH integration um, expert at the European Commission. And today she will be speaking to us about SSH in Horizon Europe. Beatrice, the floor is yours. So good morning, everybody. Very nice uh, meeting you virtually. Um, I would like to thank the uh, organizers for giving the Commission the opportunity to address you today. Unfortunately, you know what the timing of publication of the polls has been kind of delayed. So today, what thank I would you. like to, you, you hear me? Yes, I actually, excuse me for the interruption. Um, could you actually please change the um, the view on your slides? Can you click on that small circle with the three dots in it? Uh, small do, circle. Do you with... see that? Because right now we see, um, we see two sets of slides rather than just one large slide. Right. Um, if you guide me to the small circle with three dots, uh, I move need your browser to the left hand side, lower left hand side. Yes. Do you see there where you can do you Share see that? Share my screen. Screen. Yeah. Is it this one? 
I'll tell you in a moment. This is the same. It's the same, okay. You're sharing the screen, so no. Uh, So I don't know. Can you can you tell me? Yes. Let me see. Can you try to share again? Could you please try to share again? I've lost the button now. It doesn't. Uh... Okay, I think you need to go to the top of your screen and go out of the share mode. Uh, well, that's very strange. Show up the speaker, active speaker, share. Let me try one thing, please. Yeah, can I you see the slide now? Your slide. Okay. Yes, now we see slides. Okay. This is great. Okay. So you, you turn the slide, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry for that. No problem. Uh, good. Um, perfect. So, so yeah, when we um, had this preparation meeting with Kimberly and her team, I was put uh, confronted with the three following questions. Um, what does the EC do to support the social sciences and humanities integration process? And here I would like to walk you through maybe the uh, latest uh, monitoring report. Uh, what is planned for Horizon Europe? Um, I will try to concentrate on cluster two, but also go uh, beyond. And finally, what is expected by NCPs to support the process? And here I have allowed myself to add uh, the plural because there are several processes. And I think that this is something, the third point we have to elaborate together based on the um, uh, discussions uh, that we will have today. So on the next slide, I will simply capture here the results uh, the latest of the latest monitoring report available. It's the Horizon 2020 uh, report for the year 2018. So projects have started in 2018. Uh, what we can see is that um, in general, there is an, a positive evolution in terms of social sciences and humanities in terms of presence and intensity. So presence in terms of coverage, uh, flagged topics, and the intensity of the uh, participation. The quality of the integration has increased significantly. So for those of you who opened the report, as was uh, indicated uh, in the email, one of the emails of Kimberly, um, the quality aspect uh, is a parameter that is uh, defined uh, out of four indicators. If there are uh, SSH partners, more than 65%, then this counts as SSH partner. Uh, the quality can be either more than 10% or 20%. Uh, budget devoted to SSH partner, 10% or more, or 20% or more. The person month to SSH partner, again, 10% or 20%. This is the ceiling, of course. And uh, the uh, belonging of the SSH partner from at least two SSH disciplines. If these four criteria are met, we speak of a good quality. If two or three criteria are met, 
this is a fair quality and only one criteria met equals weak and none of the five of the four thresholds are met this is um, no quality i would say uh, what we can also see is that there is a strong increase in the number of the SSH flap topics across the uh, framework program, and hence also the budget allocated to those topics and the SSH partners is on the rise. On the right hand side, there you see some figures, and I think they speak for themselves. The fourth point that we can uh, gather from the report is that the participation of SSH uh, participants varies extremely um, strongly between the program parts, uh, between the scientific disciplines, and also the representation of the member states is uh, um, uh, has a large uh, variation. Uh, finally, what we can also see from the report is that the participation of the SSH partner as part of the total projects uh, remains quite stable uh, to see as compared to the previous years. I would like to go to the next slide, please. So, the second thing that we can see, may I have the next slide, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, in at a glance here, you see uh, the four years, uh, the five years of the report. So the report obviously started in Horizon 2020. So that uh, the first year was 2014, and we're looking at the data from 2014 to 2018. So you see that the, in general, there is a positive evolution since the beginning of this exercise, and that is good. Um, what we also see is that uh, the evolution uh, of the budget to the SSH flag topics and partners is very similar. So um, SSH partners capture a more or less constant share of project funding under the SSH flag topics. The share of projects with good quality SSH integration is steadily increasing, even if that is less rapid than the funding to the SSH uh, partners. And finally, what I would like to share with the next slide is that um, what we believe is that um, the efforts to strengthen the integration, for example, by the flagging of the topics uh, does contribute to the increased uh, SSH presence and intensity. We also uh, see that the participation grows also in the excellent science part. Um, we can also extrapolate that the SSH community has sufficient information, capacity and interest to participate in Horizon 2020. However, um, we also think that there is still a, a large untapped potential to improve uh, the SSH integration. So what we can say is that progress uh, is there. It is uneven if we look at uh, the different parts of the uh, framework program. So there is room for improvement. And if we go to the next slide, In Horizon Europe, we have this uh, already all this knowledge accumulated from uh, the uh, first five years of the monitoring of Horizon 2020, the previous framework program. Uh, and uh, we think that this exercise, uh, even if it is imperfect, um, can really help us uh, make the situation uh, look a little bit better. So we continue to work on the integration uh, of the SSH uh, across the new framework program, uh, across all clusters. Uh, and we also think that the holistic approach will um, achieve a deeper integration. Concrete proposals for Horizon Europe include uh, a revisited evaluation process. We will speak about that maybe in a moment, and certainly this be, will be part of the answer that we will be able to jointly give 
to how to make things uh, better for the SSH integration. Uh, we also think that we have to work hand in hand with the NCPs to ask uh, but more interdisciplinary experts be uh, enrolled in the database available for the project officers when they plan the evaluation sessions. So that really the flag projects, when they are evaluated, um, they can bring uh, what is really necessary in terms of the integration of the social sciences and humanity. And we have to work a little bit more uh, across the clusters to uh, create, but also reinforce the synergies uh, in terms of SSH. Now, going to the second part, uh, thank you. Um, we're now entering uh, the new framework program, but let me just tell you um, how the whole framework program uh, is responding to uh, the uh, priorities. The Commission has a certain number of priorities and you will find them across the new structure of the framework program and also embedded in all the topics that will be called for in the calls for proposals. The Green Deal, of course, with the climate change, the carbon neutral issue and the resource efficiency. The Europe Fit for the Digital Age, which is clearly a digital revolution. So we help the transition, but we also have to make sure that no one is left behind. The economy that works for people. A stronger Europe in the world, absolutely. We have to enhance the relationship with the neighboring countries and also those that are not neighboring promoting our European way of life. So the equality, the social fairness and tolerance will be at the heart of uh, the priorities of the Commission. And the new push for the European democracy, meaning that we have to strengthen the democratic process. With the next slide, uh, I would simply like to remind you that the vision of the Commission is strongly committed to the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And this is why in the several of texts of the calls for proposals, you will see here and there um, very clearly spelled out uh, how the proposal is going to seek to address in practical terms one or the other of the uh, Sustainable Development Board. You will also find that in the um, description of the cluster, for example, which is something that should not be neglected when you are uh, counseling people on where to apply. Um, I think it's extremely important to frame the research objectives and not to jump directly to the text of a call for proposal, but rather see it in the context of the cluster uh, so the first part, the introductory, introductory part is um, for me of paramount uh, importance. If I may have the next slide, I will show you the structure of Horizon Europe. You will see that we are uh, grounded in three pillars, excellent science, the global challenges and the competitiveness and the innovative Europe. I have put in red the pillar two because this is where the six clusters are. And I would like to focus uh, on cluster two, culture, creativity, and inclusive society. And that's why it is also in uh, red. Uh, of course, the three pillar structure is based on the excellence uh, and it maintains the funding rules and procedure of Horizon 2020. If we now go to the next slide, we will see how the integration of the social sciences and uh, humanities is evolving with the new framework program. So we keep the need for the human centric focus uh, across all the research areas. There is not, uh, as you understand, as you very well know, I must say, not a single discipline which is uh, able to address fully all uh, the societal challenges. So the need is really to work together. So the integration part here is uh, of fundamental importance. Um, there is also clearly a necessity to interact between the STEM and the SSH fields. Uh, so the interdisciplinary approaches are really what is um, uh, favored. 
The presence of the SSH across all research and innovation areas, this is again a mandate, and I told you that we are trying to uh, increase the synergies across the clusters. And there is also the need to examine in the future the societal impact of science and research, especially in the uh, new policies. I'm thinking here, for example, big themes like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, big data, health data and sharing. So these are clearly areas um, where there is a lot going on and uh, SSH will be of uh, clear importance. In the next slide, um, I would simply like to go deeper into uh, cluster two, uh, culture, creativity, and including society, and um, show you that it is uh, designed with um, three destination. I will then jump to the intervention logic, the calls, and the timeline. So in the next slide, you will see that the uh, aims uh, of course, I'm taking a shortcut here because there are several aims, but the most important aims of cluster two are really to be enhance the democratic uh, process, increase citizen participation also in the governance, the safeguard and the promotion of our cultural heritage, uh, try to respond to uh, socio-economic, technological and cultural transformation, mobilize the expertise of social sciences and humanities that we have, this richness and wealth uh, that we do have by tradition in the European Union, and provide evidence-based policy option for a socially just and inclusive European recovery. And that is, I think, one of the important elements, this one, um, at least in my views, I come from cluster one health, that really would be the key for me to bridge and to enhance the social sciences and humanities, this um, really uh, transdisciplinarity across um, the disciplines and showing how SSH are evident and are there rooted in the uh, topics. In the next slide, you will see the three destinations. They are really straightforward. So the first one is called democracy and governance. The second one is cultural heritage, cultural and creative industries. And the third one is the social and economic transformations. Now, in the next slide, uh, you are getting familiar now with uh, some of the new jargon of Horizon Europe. It's called the intervention logic. Um, if I can have the next slide, please, you will see that uh, this is also quite straightforward once you know. But the, the concept of intervention logic for me is very simple, is how to explain um, from the main societal challenge that we have how the topics of the course of proposals uh, are going to respond to the main challenge. So this slide, I think you should read it from top to bottom. So the main challenge, if you take the first one, democracies are more fragile and more vulnerable than what was in the past. What is the research and innovation expected impact here is democratic governance is reinvigorated. And also you see that uh, it's an inclusive and active society, but citizens are also empowered. So the topics that will stem from this intervention logic will be problem drivers, for example, impact of inequalities on political participation, trust and polarization. And the outcomes in terms of research and innovation could be or will be to reduce the impact of inequalities and to bring down the extremisms. It would be nice um, that the topics were already uh, published so, the, so that I could have added a line to really um, make it more visible for you uh, in terms of topics published in the call for proposal. But what I think is important is have always at the back of your mind this intervention logic on how the topics were really designed. 
So that is an example for a democracy. The next two slides will show in a similar way Yechitze, I don't believe we hear you anymore. Are you still with us? I think we may have temporarily lost Beatrice. Let's just give her a moment to see if she can join us again. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let us try and get Beatrice back. Just a moment, please. Sorry for that, everyone. I apologize for this. Um, unfortunately, we're having a couple of technical issues um, miss, with Ms. Lucaroni. Um, I would then like to suggest that we take a few minutes break, five minutes. Please come back at uh, 10.45. By then, hopefully, we'll have had an opportunity to get her back online. So, thank you. Hello. Hello, you are back. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand. I came to the office not to have any problem and there is a power cut. So that's it's okay. Really bad, bad luck. Bad that's luck. okay. <laughs> we just went for a quick break um, <laughs> since we knew that you were having some difficulties. So let's try and get your slides back up to where you left off and then we will resume um, at 1045. Okay, so here we go. So if you can just wait maybe five minutes. I then. hear you very badly, uh, Kimberly. Okay, can you hear me better now? No, I suspect that there is a problem here and the problem is that apart from the guards, I am alone in the building. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so let's just wait a few minutes. Um, I try before... the headset. Let's see. Okay. I'm so sorry. I mean, it never happened. That's fine. It can always well, happen. Not really, that's not really fine. Okay. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you quite well. And I just well, got um, a response that uh, we can all hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you very well. I, I hear um, as if things were kind of cut systematically. Okay. I put now the headset. Oh, I can see you now. Okay, That's you can see me. Nice. I can't yes. hear you. So uh, there's no problem. We can hear you. Hello? Yes, 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 I'm here. Okay. So I would say, please start again in about a, two minutes. Okay, Beatrice, please go ahead. Beatrice, did you hear me? Beatrice, are you there? And can you hear me? Okay, I think we may have lost her again. So, ah, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you can start again now. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. So apologies for this. Um, as I said before, I just came especially to the office and I see that the result is quite poor. Uh, and I'm alone in the whole building. So I really hope it will work. Um, so we were in the intervention logic on democracy and I was saying simply that um, this is important and uh, it follows for obviously for heritage and the uh, transformations. I don't think it will be useful to simply go through the list, but what is important for you to remember is that the intervention logic will follow the way that the topics have been uh, designed. Of course, when we speak about design of a topic, um, it's not the official at the commission that have designed things on their own. We always go for co-creation, co-creation out with outside um, uh, stakeholders, extremely important, and co-creation with inside services. So for the Horizon Europe, we have designed a matrix where all the uh, directorate generals have been invited so that we make sure that the research and innovation policies are working hand in hand to support the other policies and vice versa. If I can have the uh, next slide, 
and the one after as well. Uh, we now go, uh, we zoom in still with a course of a draft work program for 2021. So next slide. Yes. So uh, Horizon Europe, as has been the case for Horizon 2020, will publish a um, biannual uh, course of proposals. So it's a work program for 2021 and 2022, the, full, the first two years. Uh, and then we will have the 2023 and 2024. Um, so it means that uh, when you see here for the cluster, the cluster two cultural creativity and inclusive society has uh, an important budget to devote to research. And you see there on the right hand side at the bottom, we are speaking for the first three years of the FREMA program, 423 million euros. But what's inside in these three destinations in terms of calls? So if I can have the next slide, please. So how is this slide design? It's very easy. It's one slide that recapitulates what the situation is that uh, you will see in June with the publication of the um, calls for proposals. So for the uh, destination democracy, for the year 2021, there will be five research and innovation actions topics. The estimated budget is around 50 million euros. So the research and innovation actions, these are the larger projects that are focusing on research. In 2022, there will be a series of research and innovation actions, almost the doubles, that are looking at reshaping democracies. For destination heritage, uh, here in 2021, there will be not only research and innovation actions, but also to um, support uh, measures, coordination and support action, where the focus is not on research but rather on organizing workshops, trainings, studies. And I put it in red because presumably this is where you will find a coordination and support action that will be uh, calling for the NCPs to help with uh, engaging with the stakeholders in speaking about Horizon Europe. So if you will, it will be something similar as for the net for society. In 2022, in the cultural heritage, there will be a mix of research and innovation action and one support action. Similarly, for the destination three, you see there that there are a number of topics that will be launched for the uh, inclusiveness uh, in the first year of a program, six research and innovation action and one support action, whereas in 2022, there will be 10 research and innovation action. So the, ex the, the budget is, of course, always indicative and similar to what happened in the previous frame program, it is an indication meaning that the uh, future potential applicants can always decide to deviate from the indicative budget that is mentioned. But the advice there would be that if that is the case, this should be duly mentioned and justified in the proposal. It must not be long, but it must be there for the experts to understand why the choice of the applicant has been um, to uh, deviate from an indicative budget that was uh, mentioned in the call topic. And finally, there will be other action with uh, expertise and the presidency event that will be called in 2021 and 2022. The amounts, the indicative amounts there, of course, uh, are less, as you understand, than for the research and innovation actions and the support actions. I see that there are questions coming in. Maybe I can take them um, at the end if you agree. Yes, so, that, that's yeah. what we would. Agree. I'm already in a difficult situation here, praying that there will be no power cuts. So bear with me. And the next, uh, the next slide is very simple. Is speaking about the timeline, which is a subject, of course, that is of uh, fundamental importance for the NCPs to know. Uh, next slide. 
Um, so simply where do we stand here? Um, the publication, the adoption of a work program and the opening of the 2021 polls is foreseen somewhere in June. Um, what I have uh, heard for the moment is that we're speaking about middle of June. Um, once we are there, so you will have more information and the final information on the topics that will be uh, able for uh, participants to apply to the call for proposal. But the week after that will be also a very important event. And I believe that this is also where we can make a difference and especially spread the word about the SSH and the integration. Are, these are the research and innovation days. They are foreseen for 23 and 24 of June. This is an online event. I will spend a couple of words more in the next slide. Um, and in July or end of June, the last day of June, I have already seen that there is a tentative uh, uh, deadline for a series of NCP trainings and brokerage events uh, that are linked to the publication of a call for proposal. Um, the idea is also to have a closing date of the first poll, so those of work program 2021, with deadlines in October, uh, so that uh, they will be the uh, researchers will be to start uh, will be able to start working uh, most probably at the beginning of next year. I don't know how rapid the evaluation and the um, Sorry, the negotiation will uh, be. Okay, um, Kimberly also asked me to uh, finish uh, this brief uh, overview with something that I understand is extremely important for some of you in the audience, and it's the uh, forthcoming uh, call for proposal EIT. Um, with its roadmap for the calls. Um, I'm a bit uneasy here because I'm not working for VIT, so I also did a little bit of uh, homework, um, if I may have the next slide. And I found that uh, from the internet already and from the slot um, that is dedicated uh, to the EIT, if I may have the next slide, please. Yes. Uh, all the material is already publicly available with the roadmap for the 21-22 calls. So there, if you go there, I have simply um, captured the uh, direct uh, internet address. You will see that uh, material is already present and uh, certainly you can refer people directly and have a look at the uh, the uh, the the publications that are there. So with the next slide, I'm coming back to the research and innovation days, simply to highlight to your attention at least uh, uh, three things that are, um, I believe, important and where our unit uh, is working on. So where the SSH would be certainly prominent. The first one is on the 23rd of June uh, from 4 p.m till quarter to 5 p.m. There's a session on COVID, no one left behind, where we're trying to put forward the mental well-being, the inequalities and the recovery plan, uh, where people will be able, stakeholders after having registered, will be able to actively participate and put questions. And I think this is an important event and I will share more information as we go along. Next day, there is a session on um, cultural and creative uh, industries uh, and also a uh, possibility to have uh, information on the calls or proposals that by then should be uh, fully available to the public uh, in what we will call the house. So we will have a house for cluster two and uh, we will be there for uh, hearing, listening to the people and their ideas without, of course, uh, counseling them on the content of the proposal, but simply look at uh, all the questions that um, potential applicants may have where we can be of help. And the final slide is uh, also a way to respond to point number three that was put to me, how 
can we work together? Well, I think the important thing is, um, first of all, where are the uh, documents that uh, could be of relevance? Uh, you see there the 2018 monitoring report is available in English. Um, Horizon Europe, of which naturally you, you know almost all, if not more than myself, Funding information and procedure and how to apply. This is always extremely useful for the applicants. And maybe this is also where you will go if you have one or the other doubts. There is also a service that allows potential applicants to find uh, project partners. Um, and I believe that uh, enriching, as I said before, the database of the experts evaluator is um, a very important activity because that will help certainly to spread the word about and reinforce the visibility of the SSH. And finally, um, when people apply to a topic, I think it's important for them also to do some homeworks before and see with throwing in a couple of keywords of what they would like to do if the European Union has already funded something similar, because that is also an important argument to uh, put forward in any of the um, application. So with that, uh, I thank you again. I apologize for the uh, all these problems, technical problems that I've been faced with, and I'm looking forward to uh, a constructive dialogue with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beatrice, for your presentation and for sharing with us this information about SSH integration. Um, before we turn to the questions that um, were showing up in the chat, I'd like to take an opportunity to pose one question to you. Um, you focus quite a bit on SSH integration in cluster two, um, which is by and large the cluster basically dedicated to um, topics that would be uh, historically in some ways um, researched by researchers coming from these disciplines. Um, would it be possible to give us an idea of how SSH integration will look like um, in the other five clusters? Um, historically, for example, flagging has been um, approach taken by the commission. Is this something that will be continued? Uh, so definitely the flagging will continue and uh, just at the beginning of this week, uh, so it was yesterday, was our first day of work after the break. I had access to the uh, raw information on the number of topics that are flagged uh, in Horizon Europe already. So I'm already looking at that in the future. Um, the second part of the question is the participation of SSH scientists does indeed defer by the program parts. And if you go to the 2018 report, there is at least one um, interesting uh, histogram uh, that shows that societal challenge six, so that would correspond to cluster two uh, in the new configuration, was obviously the first uh, with 100% uh, of uh, flagging. Uh, and 84% uh, with uh, SSH participation. And the second one is the light uh, ICT, followed by uh, almost exactly we have societal challenge uh, five, and if I'm not mistaken, societal challenge one, uh, and the light space. But if you have a look at the monitoring report 2018 edition, you will see this graph and chart. And definitely, uh, as you say, it's not a surprise that the biggest budget for SSH is that of Societal Challenge 6. So I repeat, we're speaking here of Horizon 2020, it would correspond to Cluster 2. And there are uh, indeed differences according to the different programs, yes. And I think this is a hint of where things could maybe be studied more carefully to see why and if something has to be done, because not necessarily. One of the other things that we see, and it's evident, uh, if you look uh, areas like program parts, sorry, like the uh, Societal Challenge 6 are 100% flagged, however, they're only 84% 
uh, of SSH participants. And, and this is something that we also should be looking uh, more carefully at. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great, thank you for that answer. For the next set of questions, I'd actually like to invite my colleague Svantia Tubising um, to um, share with you some of the questions that have been appearing in the chat as well as in the Q&A box. Svantia? Yeah, yes, exactly. I noted four questions. Um, maybe we could just go through them chronologically. Um, the first question is about the, the, intervention, the intervention logic. Uh, regarding the source for your slides. So from which EC document did you get the intervention, intervention logic slides? It seems like Basudev has answered the question bilaterally, but maybe you could provide the answer to everyone. Uh, I didn't see the answer of uh, Basudev, I'm sorry. I mean, neither. <laughs> I think it was just uh, bilaterally. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can just intervene there. I mentioned in my reply that I think I might be mistaken that intervention logic is discussed in the strategic plan. Yes, document. you're absolutely right. And when I was in destination in um, in cluster one, uh, in destination one, healthy lives, this is exactly as you say. Uh, our main document was the um, the orientation, the strategic orientation, and the intervention logic has been designed while we went through this exercise. Um, to, to explain also to the colleagues, uh, the pen holders, the scribes, the drafters of the uh, future topics, what was really meant and how to stick to the challenges and the main priorities. Now, on the question, the precise question on from which document it comes, uh, maybe I can do some digging to see when the slides was, was first presented, because I used myself uh, previous presentation that circulate and are publicly available. So I can come back to you to, to tell you a little bit more if you wish. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I would move on to the second question. Uh, what is the rationale behind more SSH flagging and what is being done to ensure solid SSH engagement in the missions? So, um, it's a difficult question actually, um, because on one side, uh, I think we have to be, um, practical and it's not a I mean what I'm trying to say is we should not impose flagging if that is not consistent with the um, with what we are expecting science to contribute to so it should not be uh, a forced uh, exercise there but uh, definitely there are areas that would uh, benefit highly from the flagging and why this so uh, what i'm trying to say is one there is no uh, first thing is that's not uh, uh, an imposition uh, and it should not be uh, an exercise where you would be happy if you have flagged 100 percent no the flagging has to be made with caution and looking also at the future um, it's not a question of ticking a box, uh, but it's rather a question of seeing what the SSH would bring in order to meet the societal challenges of the mission of the framework program of the topic. What would be the added value? And I believe there is a lot of added value. Okay, uh, I will just move on with the questions. There are there were a question from Emma, which I don't see right now. So maybe I just I can read it you. out for you. Okay. Yes. So the question which came from Ms. Siddal is for topics that call for SSH integration, is it advisable to use the indicators that you mentioned for the quality of integration to assess how well individual proposals address the SSH inter integration aspect? Uh I don't know, uh, to be frank. Uh, I understand, and um, probably also uh, Bazudev, the next speaker, um, will uh, tell us a little bit more about the indicators. I see that he he has a, a, an important issue there. 
but um, I, I think that uh, we have to put things in context. So the proposal will be assessed by a group of independent uh, experts. Each of them is knowledgeable in a series of disciplines and will bring that to the table, that way of assessing each and every proposal. So it means that uh, we're not going to explain to the experts uh, our way of um, evaluating the effectiveness of the flagging of the topics. However, we're going to ask the experts what do they think in terms of the SSH um, value and integration of a partnership in that proposal. Um, so, uh, the most important thing there is that uh, the experts uh, are briefed on what the SSH dimension is uh, to be found in the proposal or not. Okay, uh, I will then move on with the next question from Ani. Uh, will the Commission provide any support or guidelines to help organizations to work around inflexible organizational structures that often hinder interdisciplinary work? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. Um, I think, um, I mean, let me simply remind that uh, we're speaking about a very ambitious multidisciplinary um, framework program. So if organizations do not want to work together, then it's a bad start for a potential partnership to be built uh, for applying to a proposal. Um, maybe um, it's worth having a bilateral chat for me to understand better how to help here. But um, fr from what I hear, it seems a very difficult situation. Um, and I'm probably also not very, not, not very much compatible with a framework program, but maybe I didn't understand the question correctly. So that's why I'm offering to, to have a bilateral chat on that. If I may, I think what the question was trying to get at is the fact that within organizations, there are often structures in place that make it difficult for researchers to work interdisciplinarily. Um, so not so much that they are unwilling to participate in the framework program itself, but that there are barriers at an organizational level which make it hard um, because maybe there's not enough funding available, for example, um, or they simply don't understand what is meant by uh, SSH integration or interdisciplinary work. Um, they would like to participate, but um, it's hard because their university, for example, um, doesn't quite have the structures in place to, to support this. Right, yes, thank you, Kimberly. Now it's more precise for me. Well, yes, then this is a question of uh, how to reach out to organizations that you describe and how to explain to them what is happening and what is meant uh, by SSH integration and to read together maybe the uh, whole topic. So certainly we can do that, but we, we have to do it together with your help. The NCPs are really our multipliers in the Commission uh, in the outside world. So definitely for me, it's a question of training and talking um, together. So, Swantia, um, we have time for one more question before we move to the next speaker. For those yeah. questions which were not yet posed, we will be collecting them and sharing them with our speakers today. So, don't worry, your questions will not be forgotten. Okay, then I would just um, ask a que the question from Kerry Young. Can you give examples and or advice for NCPs? on how to integrate SSH within proposals outside cluster two, for example, cluster five, where participation of SSH partners is much lower. Um, so, so I would really, as I said before, I would really read the introduction to the uh, cluster that is published in the work program. Uh, the narrative is extremely important because it frames the, um, 
uh, dedication of the cluster in the frame of the uh, whole uh, Horizon Europe framework program, and that's important. Um, yeah, so that would be my, my number one, is to read things from the start, and then you understand better what is requested. Otherwise, if you start reading the call topic alone, uh, you might definitely miss information. The second thing is that um, it's important to remind the scientists why they are uh, asking um, and submitting a proposal, why they are asking support, fun financial support to perform the research. It's not solely per for the research per se, but the research is made for society. So it has an environment there that should be described. Why do I want to do this? What is expected from this? Um, that's important again to write in the proposal. Great, thank you so much for that final answer. So on that note, I would like to now move to our next speaker and actually skip the break given that we are running a little behind um, if hopefully that's okay for everyone um, and so our next speaker will be Bazadeb Chadouri. he is a policy expert from the french ministry of higher education research and innovation and he will be speaking with us today or speaking to us i should say today on the challenges of ssh collaboration with other sciences in the horizon europe research program Bazadeb, the floor is yours Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, and I think we now okay. just need to switch the slides to yours. Right, yeah, and I've put on my camera at least for some time unless it creates a problem, in which case I'll, I'll switch it off. There you go. While you put on the slide, uh, let me just uh, first start by uh, by thanking Kimberly and the DLR for this uh, invitation. It's really wonderful. It's many years that I know the DLR, uh, so it's, it's a great occasion to, to participate in. Um, let me just state at the outset that uh, everything that I'll be saying here right now uh, are, is purely my own personal opinion and, uh, and analysis. Uh, it does not represent in any way the, the views of the French ministry that I work for or the views of the European Commission where I have worked in the, in the recent past. However, I'd just like to take the occasion to thank also two colleagues of mine, um, Tobias Strom and, and Alice Dijkstra, with whom I have exchanged uh, quite a lot on, on this topic and from whom I've learned, uh, learned much. Uh, I think at least Tobias is, is present in this, uh, in this seminar. Okay, so uh, that's, the, that's to begin with. Um, while the slide comes on, let me also start off, and this is my, the, my first slide after the, the, uh, the opening page, is that uh, we are unfortunate today to not have among us, and this is because he passed away in 2017, uh, Philip Kerodra, who was an outstanding uh, social science and humanities expert in Europe, uh, who was a civil servant at the uh, at the Commission, and who contributed enormously to this area, both within SSH itself and also on the integration question. And um, slightly a, a, a few months before he passed away, he wrote a paper, which um, uh, which circulated in Europe and which has now got published. And I refer to this paper on the second page of the of the slide. Uh, are you having a problem putting it on? I don't see the slide yet. Do you see it now? Uh, it seems to be coming on. Yeah, I can see the sharing. Okay, that's perfect. Great. Uh, you can go on to the next one. Thanks. Next slide. Perfect, yeah. So uh, this is the title of the paper. I've given the reference where it's been published in 2018. I have the paper since 2017. Uh, so, and he, there's this very intriguing quote towards the end of the paper. I'll tell you a bit more about this paper, uh, which says, and this really refers to what the principal idea I want to focus on this, uh, uh, this interaction and collaboration between, between the SSH and the, all, all the other sciences, let's put it that way that interdisciplinarity is not an obligation, it is a choice, and the why, how, where, and when are very important questions for its relevance, and how it's effective, the questions that came up in what uh, what uh, Beatrice Lucarini was saying, and the questions that have been posed, and I'll try to answer at least to a couple of the questions that have been uh, posed. Uh, yes, please, uh, go on to the next one. Uh, so in this paper, 
uh, Philippe Kerudra gives, and that's where you you find it very useful, uh, a brush up of the history of uh, SSH, the evolution of SSH in the framework programs, right? So the fourth one, which I believe was in the 1980s, and um, there was a specific de dedicated program for the social sciences and humanities from this period, uh, and they well, they kept evolving, uh, but Pilkeyutra states in this paper that the ambition was always there, but the means, the instrument, in order to make this really impactful across all the, um, let's say, all the different areas that we are being tackling, all the instruments were not yet there. Hence, in spite of the best ambition, um, it's not clear that it really did have an impact in the sense that impact was being measured. And as time goes on, particularly from FP6 onward, the idea of measuring the impact of social science and humanities programs, in fact, of all the programs, became stronger and stronger. So that's, that's the first, first part. However, um, I would say the following, uh, that there is a, a clear rupture, and this is the point at which I started actually working on the framework programs, uh, the beginning of age 2020, which was the eighth program. And age 2020 was a game changer in the sense that the approach to, uh, you know, to solving scientific problems say changed drastically in the sense that it's really, it was not really discipline based anymore, be it the sciences or be it the social sciences and humanities. It was this approach of, of uh, confronting global challenges, of providing solutions to real world problems, of making science impact the policy area of problem solving. This was the approach that uh, that came into focus, and this really pushed disciplines and communities outside what I'd call their comfort zones. And in fact, um, at the commission, I had uh, the opportunity to, to listen uh, to the director general who introduced these uh, changes at this point of time. Uh, it was uh, Robert Ian Smith, and he used to say something uh, which really, I think, struck the imagination, everybody's imagination. He used to say, I'm not interested in the papers that you're publishing, which of course is a uh, primary focus of any research scholar, any community of scholars. He said, I want you to give me policy recommendations that I can put, put into place from next Monday morning. So this was the way he used to put the problem and it it really impacted the way people think about it. Uh, yes, the next slide, please. Uh, Kimberly, thanks. Okay, so um, as I was saying, a majority of scholars are still not intrinsically comfortable at being pushed out of their disciplinary zo uh, zones like this. At least in the first part of the project, I'd say between 2014 and uh, and uh, 17, I was NCP coordinator in France at that time. This uh, this approach was really drawing a lot of flack from the academic community uh, in the early stages because the presentation style of the programs had changed. Uh, it, disciplines could identify less easily with the way a problem was being presented. And um, there, were, there was an increasing emphasis, which can be seen, as you know, it was divided into uh, particularly the challenge question and the social impact question became important. And social impact going beyond just publishing or diffusing research became a focus on which the community started work working. And it has to be said that I do believe here the commission was a game changer. They, they influenced the way scientists think about these problems, they started discussing more. So part of the criticisms that are there in Philip Carroll's paper started being addressed in the way that the impact question was being was being discussed in communities. And here, I mean, to start with, uh, yes, please, the next slide. And um, so on this, of course, the the commission was playing a role in getting disciplines to work together in having SSH evaluators to participate in different areas of the program. So these were the changes that were taking place. However, and here I, I will begin by saying that the commission cannot do everything. Okay? So the commission did what it can do with the indicators that it has, and I'll say a couple of things on the, on the indicators, but it is also up to the communities themselves uh, to find the, well, to find the place and particularly, I'd say, to go upstream in the way that scientific projects are designed to influence the commission, to go upstream and to discuss this. Because as you know, and this is part of the, my response to questions that have been asked, you know, learned bodies exist in Europe, on the European continent, since at least the times of Newton and Galileo. So there's absolutely no reason 
why scientific community should not be able to talk to each other. And this is something, I think, surprisingly, a few centuries, there still remains a bit of an accuracy. And here, the scientific communities that exist, I would say, have certainly have a very important part of the task to do to be able to collaborate with each other. So this is one, a first point of criticism, and I'll, I'll just say it once again. I mean, my intention here is to raise some criticisms with a very positive intention that we can convey to our communities when we go back to our countries, uh, the, the need for scientific groups to meet each other. Because that's one way of influencing the entire process, the change. And there was a question on how scientific communities and stakeholders influence the, communi uh, the communities via the national thematic groups that react to the programs as they come out. All the areas have these groups. So this is the canals along with the scientific bodies to influence them. And here, as, I, as I've written on the slide, you know, the indicators that we have that are useful, there's no doubt about it that uh, Beatrice Lucaroni mentioned also, and, and she uh, she showed from the last monitoring reports uh, that Christoph Kania at the unit of Harold Hatton worked on, that these have evolved positively, which is a good thing. However, they remain administrative indicators. They are not really, we don't know what's going on behind in the type of, of a collaboration that is happening on the scientific fronts. I'll give you one example. One of the great advances, we'll see it in the, in the next slide, is let's say the way scientists are working on, on COVID. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, uh, on COVID. Uh, for example, the way an epidemiolog epidemiologist, a geographer, and an economist look at COVID data, uh, look at the geographical data on the spread of uh, human, uh, on the movement of human beings, are pointers to the way that they can work together. And this is precisely where, in fact, the way the commission um, brought out these topics from February, uh, from February 2020 onwards, uh, just a few weeks before Europe went into lockdown, was it was really path breaking in the way that it brought the disciplines together. It's not that it didn't exist before, but probably to a lesser extent than it did. And if you in all of these, you know, th this evolution from traditional concerns, as I said, like growth and employment to very complex issues, uh, pandemic diseases, migration, conflicts of culture and identity, terrorism, disruptive technological breakthroughs, all of these phenomena start, have started playing a very big role in bringing, in bringing um, disciplines together. If you take the question of big data, now data has always existed, Big data has, is a new challenge, and the way any discipline that you care to think about is dealing with big data are pointers to the way that they can work together. Again, that's something where the communities have to come together the, themselves, upstream in a way, I'd say, almost one year before a program is written, in order to be able to influence the process that is ultimately going to bring the topics to your table, or to the table of your communities. And that's where the, the it's not that they don't work on it, they do. These communities exist, but I have a feeling that the interaction between them and the and the European Commission can go even further. I'd like to say from, from this. And, uh, what I've written down here, so obviously areas like AI, social media, fake news, uh, you know, uh, if I can again come back to a critical issue, I was already at the Commission in 2016 when Brexit and the election of Trump happened the European Commission was enormously criticized for not having predicted these things. So here, all the, the upper hierarchy of the Commission started telling, you know, Commission policy experts, think disruptively, think out of the box, box tell us what we don't want to hear. So th that is the right approach. That's the way, in, in, a, um, well, in a way that one has to go in order to, to anticipate events that are high risk, that in, in fact, cannot be anticipated rather than remaining in a continuity. So this, this technique of thinking out of the box is something that had, has to become part of the culture. And that is something that, I mean, I'm sorry to put it this way, it won't happen in supranational organizations. It's going to happen outside in science. And that's where the connection between the two becomes important. Okay, I'll go on to the next slide. How much time do I have left, uh, Emily? Pardon? <laughs> Uh, and uh, can I take another four or five minutes? Yes, Three, you can. Minutes? No problem. Okay. Thanks a lot. So this is what I wanted to say, that this is uh, this is what is needed. And particularly, 
to come back to, to again to some examples uh, in data driven disciplines uh, and more and more SSH is becoming data driven. Uh, there are, uh, for example, you know, areas like economics, linguistics, geography, um, areas of sociology, political science use lots of data. It's obviously penetrated areas like history also in a big way, and this will only keep on increasing, particularly thanks to research infrastructures. By the way, that's another area where I work on uh, in the European context. I, I, um, I am a member of three uh, European bodies in, in infrastructure, and the infrastructure is available, and the tools that they give to SSH are enormous and probably not sufficiently well known beyond the infrastructure community that uses this. And so this is also a very important possibility on which I advise our NCP colleagues to, to talk to, uh, to, uh, uh, to our colleagues on this because it, it enormously increases the possibility of collaboration with other disciplines. I'll give you two more examples. Uh, so uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Thanks. Yeah, okay. Uh, and here, let me give you a, a positive and a negative example. I've already told you about COVID and how it brought about uh, collaboration, and that's a very positive example. Let me take, give you a, a negative example, and this is a very interesting one. You see, already four years back, I think this was in 2000, and, somewhere between 2016 or 18, I don't remember the exact year. The GRC, the Joint Research Center of the Commission, uh, which is itself a DG, organized a seminar called the Science of Justice. Now, it was presented in a way as if justice was a topic in that existed somewhere in the intellectual backwater, uh, backwaters of modern thought, and it needed to be brought into the 21st century by talking about the science of justice. And the example that was given to highlight this uh, exclusively was the behavior of chimpanzees when they're sharing a pie. Now, why am I telling you this? You know, see, I have nothing against studying the behavior of chimpanzees. It's very important to do so, and the behavior of animals can give very important pointers to individual and collective behavior in human beings, which is really one of the most important cross-cutting areas for SSH and many other scientific disciplines right now, particularly in this data-driven world. So it's important to study, but the problem with this seminar was that while talking about this behavior of chimpanzees, it completely put aside two centuries of really high, well, one to two centuries of high-class research in philosophy, in analytical philosophy, in the philosophical foundations of economics, in law, in political science that already exists on the question of justice. And that was what was sad, was that it did not bring disciplines together and ask them to confront each other by the way they put forward the idea and the analysis of justice. I'm just giving this as an example, just to tell you the kind of dialogue that we need in order to highlight real world problems. Uh, let me give you another positive example. I follow a, a research infrastructure called ERIHS, which is European Research Infrastructure of the, in the Heritage Sciences, which is a fantastic example of, in, of collaboration between physical, nanosciences, chemistry, in studying um, a variety of, of uh, European, uh, not only European, but also heritage outside the, the European zone, outside the European uh, Union, on everything to do with, um, with um, cultural heritage, artifacts, museums, was kept in museums in order to do with architectural sites, many of which are getting uh, destroyed in conflicts, for example, in, uh, in Syria and Iraq, you, you know the cases. And this heritage science enables scientists to really build up uh, and preserve the memory of all these places and all the artifacts that exist by doing dating, imagery analysis, and a variety of other scientific tools. I'm not an expert on it, but, but what I can tell you is that it's a fantastic example of collaboration between the sciences that is enabling us to understand and preserve cultural heritage and identity. So it's, these are very important tools and the, the quality of the, of the uh, collaboration in these areas is really something remarkable and can only progress. So, so these are the examples that you can give your community. I think I've almost come to the end. Uh, the last slide, please. Uh, yeah, so, so one thing we have to be aware of particularly is that you know, there's no such thing as finished science. And one of the problems we are confronted with in this age is that there are scientific controversies all the time. Uh, fake news, skepticism over climate change, you know the debate on vaccines today. All this is to do with the field of uh, human behavior and human incentives and how they are designed. So when we talk about 
desirable behavior and changes with respect to vaccines, with respect to climate change, how we need to modify, for example, our eating behavior towards a healthier life and a healthier planet. So these do involve very profound normative value judgments. They cannot be avoided. And on this normative intent, the collaboration between the SSH disciplines and the sciences remains, I'd say, an everyday subject. So we need to encourage it, and it, it needs to be encouraged, of course, at the European supranational level, but it also needs to be strongly encouraged in the communities at the national levels also, so that they can transmit this dialogue. There's a lot of exchange that takes place laterally between communities, and these needs needs to be kept on while a, a Horizon Europe program is being designed. We are only at the first phase. So that's the message I'd like to uh, put forward today on this question. You'll see I've avoided largely the word integration because I do feel, and that's my last comment, that it gives a slightly negative connotation to the role that social science and humanities can play. Uh, you know, um, it has been used in uh, the word instrumentalization has been used in this very useful three page document that uh, Network Society has circulated. I think I had a slide on, on that. Uh, can you, excuse me, can you please take the last slide, please? Yeah, I think it's the last one. Um, Kimberly, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so th this document is very useful because it raises some of the issues and points out what works and what does not. And uh, yeah, so that's why I wanted to raise this issue of instrument. And we need to avoid this by really calling for a deeper scientific collaboration. I'll stop with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bazadev, for that. So I would now like to ask Swanta if there are any specific questions for Bazadeb. Uh, yes, there is a quite long comment from one NCP. I don't know if I just... Is it directly should... related to Bazadeb's presentation? Yeah, and and a, a bit of something in general. I, I don't know if, it, if you want me to read it out loud. It's, it's a quite long comment or... Um, I believe there was just the questions really at the end. Perhaps this question can be posed to both Bazadep and um, Faluka Roni, um, since it's addressing the issue of the integration of the social sciences and humanities outside of cluster two. Um, given the fact that um, Beatrice, your presentation primarily focused on cluster two, which is already rather focused on SSH research, um, the question is asking, how are we as NCPs to understand the way SSH are researchers from these other, from how researchers from the social sciences and humanities are to be addressed in proposals for topics in the other clusters? Okay, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll try to answer that. In fact, I, I saw a similar question before. Uh, well, you see, it is true. Okay, I gave the example of COVID. The other positive example I have to live, uh, I'd like to give is the Green Deed, uh, which was published uh, in 2020 and had its uh, uh, its uh, finalization date, I think, for 24 January of this year. In the Green Deal, there's been a very strong response of the social science and humanities community, which is a very strong sign. Actually, and that's part of the problem, when NCPs of other clusters who have an SSH responsibility, uh, you really need to do what net for society actually had done during age 2020 and which i hope that their new avatar will do again is really to uh, to go into these flag topics but to go beyond the flag stop flag topics also do some digging by by playing on keywords and doing text mining to show where ssh presence is very useful ssh presence is obviously useful everywhere where uh, keywords like social science and humanities, social problems, economic problems, geography, space, all of this is mentioned, okay? Or, or anything else that you might care to think of. That's obvious. But it, they might also be present in places where the mention is not that clear. For example, if you take the health cluster, everywhere where there is epidemiology, there is an SSH angle because epidemiology is to do with human behavior and epidemiologists and all those people in medicine working in that area need social science and humanities collaboration. Very often, 
And, well, okay, I hope I won't upset anyone by saying this, but I have heard often, uh, you know, people saying that in cluster one, uh, you know, people in medicine, etc., don't feel the need for SSH. I don't believe that's true. One has to go and meet them and explain to them how their presence can be useful. So that's where you have to dig out SSH people in the, who work in these areas on these problems and tell them, see, even if it's not explicitly mentioned, this is where you have a place. Why don't you go and talk to the people who are leading this area on applying, on including you in a project like this? And this has to be, as I said, upstream and not just one month before the close of the project as a, as a token. That's completely useless. It doesn't serve any purpose. And um, you know, when I worked with Tobias at the, at the commission, uh, we often tried to uh, to stress this 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 point. So that's a, one example where we've got to search them out. The same same is true in the environmental area. That, for example, uh, you know, take the area like transport, transport and mobility. It's very important, and it's important to stress. And the transport and mobility NCPs are. Are, I think perfectly aware in everything to do with urban transport, the necessity of involving SSH scholars. That's also one area we've got to go and dig out the SSH scholars, even maybe in topics that are highly technical, to try to see where they can fit in. So I would stress that you need to go see everywhere, be it industry space or whatever. You need to see where there are important social or economic. Um, dimensions and again avoiding the use of the word acceptance which i'd say like integration is a lead, red flag to many social scientists uh, to say that uh, that it, it has to be based on needs and that's why the stream part early in a project identifying the the need to have ssh so that it can also be flagged is also a scientific job that we need to do and, and it needs to do really as much bottom up as possible okay so have i partially answered this uh, Nina, yeah, I can see your question. Uh, we need to come together. Yeah, how can you support this process? Okay, what I'd say, uh, I would suggest this. You see, um, some of my colleagues and uh, friends ever and former colleagues at the commission have told me this. Uh, 20, 2020, you see, tw the 21, 22, uh, the 21, 22 uh, planning is done. That's not going to change now. Okay, but 23, 24 is open. So this is the time that the that DLR and the and the new NCP can bring together. At least you can't do it everywhere. You know, it, it requires time, uh, organization, etc. But at least take some critical areas where the presence, particularly, uh, for example, COVID or the Green Deal or digital areas. These are particularly important. Okay, uh, all the five priorities that were shown in the slides of uh, Beatrice Lucre and Roni. In those areas, select specific areas where in the 2023-24 program, we can play a role of influencing the way the program. So all the mechanisms exist for doing that, from the learned bodies to the member states, to the program committees, uh, to the national thematic groups. So the totality of these instruments need to be mobilized, and that's where the NCP can obviously play a major role. Uh, we need more networking events, yes. But one thing we need to do is not, you know, is really to have a larger participation that's always, I think, a, you know, a problem we face of the scientists themselves coming. Uh, very often they don't want to, for reasons one can understand. They feel that all this is administrative, that uh, that they won't gain anything by coming. But that's where we need, need to mobilize whomever we know among, you know, in the scientific leadership in Europe, and they do participate in, uh, in the European program strongly to get them to participate. Uh, that would be my, my answer to the second part of your question, Nina. All right, thank you very much, Bazadeb. Santia, are there any further questions? Uh, no particular questions, just a, a longer comment from uh, David Padlamenning, who also asked the question that you read out a few okay. minutes ago about okay. um, the, the European Commission uh, giving sharing more information with NCPs given the fact that work program drafts have been circulating for months. But this is a rather general remark, I would say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry for that. No, uh, let me simply say that this is normal practice. I mean, until things are not officially published, I don't think that we can present them. I perfectly well know that if you Google on the internet, you will find them. 
I don't know. Um, I would like to just say that we actually are running a little um, behind time, but I would just quickly like to pose this question to Beatrice, if I may, um, Bazadep. Um, the fact that um, the question from um, the NCP was also how are NCPs outside of cluster two to understand the way SSH is going to be addressed in their clusters? Is there any insights you can give us at this point for how NCPs coming from cluster three or six or one or even four or five um, can help their applicants to understand how SSH researchers should be integrated into the topics that are being addressed there? Uh, yes, I think the first question is, why do you do this type of research? And what are you going to deliver to society? And from there is, how is it framed in the framework program and the uh, mandate, but are the policies that are going to be helped by this type of research? And then look at the partnership. Am I missing somebody? I do not know, but thank you. Thank you once again for your willingness to respond to that question. So um, thank you, Bazadep, very, very much for that. Very interesting and um, although somewhat critical, insightful um, presentation, I think it was quite uh, good to hear about what it is that we as NCPs should be taking in consideration when we are thinking about this issue of the role of the social sciences and humanities and how they can help to address um, the various topics that are going to be published in the various cluster work programs. On that note, um, we will now turn to our thank final you. presentation. You're welcome. So, Diana. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, also from my side uh, to Basudet and to Beatrice for your presentations and also for your uh, for your questions from from the audience. Um, so the last presentation will be, uh, you know, from the practical side of, of an NCP of a national contact kind from um, Kimberly herself. So the tools and tips uh, in support of SSH integration into EU research and innovation framework programs. Kimberly um, works in the, norm, in the uh, German um, National Contact Point Society, so the contact point for SSH. Um, Kimberly, the floor is yours for uh, the last presentation. Thank you very much. So I will just quickly share my slides. One moment, please. Just a moment, please. I hope that you can see my slides with, I will close this panel. I believe this might be causing a small problem. I can share your slide if you want. Yes, please. Can you okay. do so? It's not working. Okay, great. So thank you everyone. And as Liana mentioned, I'm just going to spend the next few minutes talking to you a bit about some practical tools and tips that you can use to help support the SSH integration process. So a little bit of background. As Diana mentioned, although I do work as part of the German National Contact Point um, Society as an NCP, I'm also a member of the Net for Society project. You might be familiar with Net for Society, but for those of you who are not, it is the International Network of National Contact Points for Societal Challenge 6 in Horizon 2020. It has been running since 2018 and will currently run until the end of this year. And it involves Societal Challenge 6 from over 60 countries within Europe and also worldwide. It has four main objectives. 
the main objective that I'm going to actually focus on amongst these four today is the support to social sciences and humanities integration in the horizon 2020 because it's in the context of net for society that a number of tools and services have been developed which have primarily been shared with the ncps coming from societal challenge six but they are open for actually every ncp to make use of and we actually highly encourage this so as we learned today ssh into integration it's really a concept that has to do with multidisciplinarity. It's really about increasing collaboration between researchers coming from the social sciences and the STEM sciences disciplines um, to help find solutions to very complex social problems. As we know, Horizon 2020, as well as Horizon Europe is very much focused on finding solutions to extremely complex societal challenges challenges that require more knowledge and know-how expertise whatever you want to call it from just from what more from essentially what a single discipline can provide and so that's why it's really been about trying to come up with tools to really help bring these two different disparate groups of researchers together so that they can better understand each other and work together So I'm gonna to talk today about these various tools and services. The first one that I'd like to start with, go to the next slide, I'm sorry. Sorry. That's okay. So the first tool that I'd like to talk about is what is known as the SSH Opportunities Document, shorthand. It's full title, you can see here, and it is actually a document that covers all flag topics that have been published during a specific work call period during the Horizon 2020 program. Um, it focuses on providing information on all SSH funding opportunities available um, throughout each and every societal challenge, but additionally also a few other programming areas. It goes also a bit beyond just the flag topics, also noting any topics that have what could be considered um, significant uh, room for the participation of social, uh, researchers coming from the social sciences and humanities. This is a document that has been produced, or I should say published regularly during the runtime of the Net for Society project. Um, given that Net for Society is currently running on a cost neutral extension, it, this document will once again be produced for, for the first Horizon Europe calls. It will continue to be done by APRA, our Italian partner in the project, um, but it will this time be initially produced in the context of, context of the Bridge to Europe, uh, excuse me, Bridge to Horizon Europe project. To find this document, if you are curious about it, um, could you please go forward again? Thank you. Um, you can find it if you're curious to understand what it looks like, what it contains, what it's all about. You can go to the Net for Society website and you will find this under our SS, um, under the SSH opportunities um, area of the uh, website or also under useful documents. So. The next topic or the next tool I would like to mention is the monitor report. While the monitor report itself is actually a publication produced by the European Commission, there have been five reports to date. The fifth most recently was published in December 2020 uh, with the aim of presenting information, um, I should say data on the overall participation of SSH researchers in Horizon 2020, which is something that Beatrice mentioned in her presentation. Um, it furthermore is used to help identify flag, I guess you could say, to the commission areas in need of adjustment, um, areas that need to be looked into more concretely, more critically to understand what is perhaps not working quite as well to help support um, the further involvement and collaboration of these types of researchers in various research areas. As we know, it is um, a document that has shown or essentially helped to show that there has been steady progress in the involvement of these researchers um, over the course of Horizon 2020. But what it also shows is that this is a rather slow process and one that can be improved. Um, 
the reason I mentioned this document is because it is not something actually produced from Net for Society directly, but what Net for Society has done is provided the data analysis. This analysis has been done by OPERA, and OPERA will do so as well for the sixth report, it is currently in the process of um, beginning its analysis. We don't know quite yet when the report will be published, but um, once it is, we will most definitely um, notify all of you. Um, could you please go forward? Next slide. Okay, so beyond the monitoring report, which you can use to help understand the way in which SSH works in a quantitative sense, as well as qualitatively what you can think about when you're advising your research community, another useful tool are fact sheets, which have been produced. Okay, I hope that you can all now see the slide on fact sheets. That's where I'm at currently. Um, but as I was mentioning, these fact sheets have been uh, produced primarily with the intention of sharing good practice examples. Okay. So the monitoring report, do you now see fact sheets? Mara, could you please move the slide one further to fact sheets? Can you see the slide? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. Now, now I get reports that you can all see it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Still having a few technical issues. So, as I was mentioning, these fact sheets, which are also available on the Net for Society website, are designed to help share tips, ideas, good practice examples on how to successfully design and implement multidisciplinary research projects within the context of Rising 2020. They are based on interviews that have been conducted by OPERA with project coordinators in the various societal challenges, and these have all been flagged topics, um, who have shared the do's, the don'ts, what worked, what didn't work. Um, just to give an idea of what it is that consortia should be taken in consideration. For example, how early they should start, which is very early, um, talking with researchers outside of the main disciplines that maybe they work in, especially from the social sciences and humanities, how they should come up, for example, with um, a common language so that they understand each other, because often someone coming from nanoscience is going to use a, have a very different understanding of a set of terms than, say, a linguist might. Um, and um, in addition to the fact sheets that have been produced for the uh, societal challenges and Horizon 2020, there's also a new set of fact sheets, which you can find under this link by the title Success Stories and SSH STEM Collaboration. These have been designed with Horizon Europe particularly in mind. The information is still based on successful examples coming from Horizon 2020, but they are still designed and useful for all projects that will be funded in Horizon Europe. Okay, can you please go to the next slide? Okay, thank you. So, in addition to supporting researchers um, and you as NCPs with the production of fact sheets, with helping with the production of the monitoring report, or with the production of the opportunities document, an additional activity in which we have been involved in, and which is very useful for uh, researchers looking for funding opportunities, is the monitoring of such opportunities in other EU instruments. So specifically, what does that mean? That means opportunities that appear in the context of published error nets, um, joint programming projects, for example, um, partnerships in Horizon Europe, um, joint technology initiatives, joint programming initiatives, as well as Article 185 instruments. This information um, was current, was always done on a regular basis, and it was always posted on the Net Society website. Um, this is something that currently is no longer taking place, but um, will be something that will be taken into consideration in the future as we are currently in the process of putting together an application for the Cluster 2 um, network project. 
Okay, next slide, please. So beyond the tools that I mentioned, which are really designed for your for you as an NCP, something else that um, we have been active in doing is the uh, organization and implementation of brokerage events. So brokerage events, which have taken place uh, specifically between SSH and STEM researchers, as well as with actors coming who are non-academic, um, who would we would want to involve, for example, those coming from uh, small and medium enterprises, um, since they're often also asked for in a number of topics um, to provide expertise in producing solutions. Um, this is something that uh, specifically helps researchers to build their consortia, um, which is very important in when they are thinking of writing and submitting proposals. Um, we have done this as well um, with a number of other NCP networks um, by appearing and working together with them in their brokerage events. Um, oftentimes, um, these have been in person before the pandemic, but we have also successfully organized and provided um, online brokerage opportunities, um, both before um, the pandemic, as well as for the Green Deal call, for example, which was a very, very successful event, which was done in collaboration with the commission. Um, many of these brokerage events also come in addition to, or are organized in um, conjunction with um, commission info days, so that um, there is a maximum benefit that can be provided to those who are interested in taking part. Okay, next slide, please. The last tool that I'd like to mention is a partner search tool, which was developed in the context of the project um, and has really been designed to help projects which are looking for additional partners. Um, it's open to project coordinators who can fill out their profiles online um, and this information is then shared. Um, currently, this tool is disabled, but the partner search is still possible by having um, any uh, researcher from any national context write to the NCP, which they will then share with us centrally at Netflix Society. And then this information is currently being shared through the network, um, either posted on our website, which is our current um, solution to this problem since the original tool is now disabled. Um, but we are more than happy to um, receive information from you from anyone who is looking for a partner who is looking to be part of an upcoming Horizon Europe call. Okay, so those were really the tips and tools that I wanted to mention um, related to SSH integration um, and how you can help support that process amongst your research community. We are very open here at Net for Society to um, help you and support you in any way. This is a, a basically an offer that we offer to all NCP networks. If you have questions on SSH integration, we're here for you and we're more than happy to help you. So. I'm happy for any questions that you may have. We still have a few minutes, um, but if not, always feel free to contact me or my colleagues, um, Ms. Nina Brown, who is the coordinator of Net for Society, um, as well as my colleague, Dominic Klinkenberg or Ms. Jutta Zimmerman, and we're more than happy to help you. Okay. Uh, Kimberly, so far there are no questions in the chat. Okay. Great. Then, well, we are one minute to 12. I would say on that note, um, we have come to the end of our event today. Thank you all very, very much for participating. Um, I'd like to reiterate that the presentations will be shared with you. Um, I'd also like to raise your attention to um, a link that I am currently posting in the chat. Um, if you would like to share your thoughts with us and provide us with feedback on this event, um, then we ask that you please um, go to um, this link and um, click upon it and fill it out. But otherwise you will also be receiving um, a feedback form as well as the presentations in a separate email. So, and once again, I'd like to thank all of our speakers who took part today. We really appreciate the time that you took to be with us.
Bye bye. Yeah, thank you. Thanks bye. a lot. Thank you. Thank you You're very welcome. much. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 I'll be happy to reply to the questions uh, when you send them. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And bye. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.